What about you? Robbie from Premier Lawns. Premier Lawns is a lawn care service based in Belfast, Northern Ireland. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about leather jackets and my top five tips for controlling them. In this video, I'll also be restoring the damage done to this lawn from the leather jackets. You'd be surprised at how much havoc something as small as leather jackets can create. The last few weeks I've been doing a couple of different videos on repairing uh, lawns, one with soil and one with sand. In this video we're going to be repairing this lawn with soil, but as I've done a video last week or two weeks ago about um, renovating lawns, I would do another video and I would talk about the leather jackets and uh, the best way to control them and why they're in your lawn and also my top five tips on how to control them. So let's begin. What is a leather jacket? A leather jacket is the larvae stage of crane fly or daddy long legs. So all insects change in their lifetimes. Blue bottles, for example, are maggots before they're flies. Butterflies are caterpillars. Crane flies are leather jackets. We refer to these as these grubs as larvae. And the job of the larvae is to eat, eat, and more eight before metamorphosizing into an adult who will mate, lay eggs, and the life cycle. You're probably familiar with maggots. They like to eat rotten rubbish. Caterpillars are fussy eaters and depending on species will stick to eating the leaves of one plant. And boy, do they eat a lot. If you've ever had a cabbage patch, patch really by caterpillars, you'll know how much they can put away in a day. Leather jackets feast in the roots of grass plants, which is why they're particularly not welcomed by us lawn lovers. So what are the signs that you have leather jackets in your lawn? Really between August and April you'll probably have no idea that there's leather jackets in your lawn. They remain underground, they're quietly chewing away in the roots, however they're tiny so the amount will, is easily replaced by another crop. From late April, or from late April through to early June the beasts really start to grow and to do that they, they, eat, they need to eat lots. Your grass plants Will be unable to grow roots fast enough. You'll also see yellowing of the grass when when you tug in the blades. The the plant will literally come away from the soil very easily, and there be barely any roots in the plant. If you see a lot of birds along, that's another pretty good clue. If there's a lot of birds pecking away at the lawn, there's something there that they want to eat. So the life cycle of leather jackets: an adult crane fly emerges from the ground in the summertime, and it'll usually mate, lay eggs, and die within forty eight hours. The female likes to lay the eggs in the lawns. She will lay up to about 300 eggs and these hatch grubs within 10 to 15 days later. The grubs have a four stage life cycle. The larvae grow fast in the autumn, slower in winter and faster again in spring. When, you, when the soil warms up, they feed really fast in the roots and that's when you see the most damage. In and around May, the grubs will stop eating. They putate and they emerge from their burrows and Summertime as cream flies. Interrupting the life cycle to minimise damage. There are currently no chemical controls to kill off leather jackets, so as lawn lovers were limited to two different types of treatment a biological treatment and disturbing the life cycle so they limit their life. Biological controls, nematodes. The soil beneath your lawn is like a very busy city. It's teeming with all sorts of life forms. Amongst those creatures are good microbes that help the plant survive and nasties that can cause problems for us whenever they get out of control. It's really a doggy dog world down there and there's some goodies and there's some baddies and vice versa. Amongst the population are very small worms known as nematodes. These little fellas they have an appetite for leather jackets. They climb inside them, they release their bacteria and they kill the host. It's pretty gruesome but it works to our advantage. If in the course if in the course of caring for your lawn and you suspect that leather jackets are lurking, you can treat them with nem nematodes. Now this sounds ideal but there's a butt and it's a really big butt. The nematodes work best in warm moist soil and usually whenever the leather jackets are at the smallest. If the conditions are wrong at all, they just don't work and it can be really frustrating. Here's my top five tips for dealing with the leather jackets. This is a regular maintenance plan which becomes super important if you see lots of daddy, lengths, daddy long legs in your garden. 
where you've been away on holidays and you suspect they've visited while you've been away. Tip number one, scarf hide or remove any eggs or larvae that are lurking in the thatch layer. Tip number two, aerate to thoroughly disturb the soil and improve the drainage. Tip number three, if you're confident that the soil temperature will stay above 12 degrees for the next four to five weeks, apply the nematodes. Tip number four, make sure that your lawn has a really good feed in, in early autumn and another one in midwinter. It's vital that you keep those roots strong enough and vigorous to outgrow any damage. Tip number five, keep an eye out for any signs that you might have yellow tigers in your lawn. So these would be yellow grass or lots of activity from the birds. As I've said in the past, it can be really frustrating and hard to make sure that the nematodes work. It's recommended that you put them on in a, in a in wet conditions or water the lawn beforehand, put them on and then water the lawn afterwards. As they're a living thing, you need to make sure that the spray is really clean before you spray them on or you can put them on with a watering can but make sure it's really clean. And it's vital to make sure that the lawn stays watered for the next week to really help soak them down. There's other things to consider, like if you put them on a sunny day that don't like UV light. I wouldn't um, use any wet maidens either to soak them down in. So if you're finding this video helpful, it's really good if you could smash that like button for me and subscribe to the channel for more videos. If you hit the like button, it really, really helps me out. So before come to the end of this video, there's a few other products that you can try now. I say that you have to try these at your own risk and they may and they may not work for you. There's a product called Riggel G, it's an organic garlic nutrient and plant biostimulant. It's basically made of garlic and the, the um, grubs don't like it and it forces them back down into the soil. Uh, Big Out, the Green Keepers Association has been carrying out some research on this as far as I know and uh, some Green Keepers have Pure neem oil, unrefined and cold pressed. So neem oil can be used in dogs and horses for fleas and tick and mite control. And it's really, it's an excellent um, parasite. Re Lastly, beer, let stick with me in this one. Beer has been reported to work because the yeast content in the beer um, kills off the grubs. Though I'm sure if you put it on, it'll make the grass come up half cut. Now I have some links down in the description for these products, um, if you want to buy them and try them yourself, again, I must say, use them at your own risk. Products we used. The seed in this lawn was Bamberg E7. It's a sports rye. So the benefits of using this grass seed, 100% perennial rye grass, rapid germination, really good recovery for wear. Um, it's a great option for this lawn as the homeowner, homeowner has young kids and the grass will wear really well. The soil we used is it's a specialist soil that we'll buy from one of my suppliers. It's an enriched topsoil that we use for smaller lawns where we, we can't get, there'd be no point buying a, a big ton bag of 70, 30 for a lawn. And we also treated the lawn with fertilizer and uh, sprayed on the, the seaweed. So again, if you've enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. It really, really helps me out. And this here is the lawn all finished off. Um, you can see it all matted in, ready for growth. So I came back three weeks later for a look and really happy with how the lawn's progressed. You can see all the new grass seeds coming up and the lawn's doing really well. Um, again, we'll probably be applying some nematodes later on in the year for this lawn. Listen, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Again, just smash that like button.